So you're here for the inaugural edition of Green Tech Festival. Also, as I just mentioned, COP27 wrapping up. Why was it important that you're doing this now and why in Singapore? So we're going global this year. We're on a world tour. Uh, our flagship is always Berlin. And Singapore just makes so much sense because it's so centrally located, of course, for this crucial region of Southeast Asia. Um, and it's also at the forefront. Singapore is doing a lot. Uh, there's a green plan, 2030, which has been outlined, um, which, for example, denotes 80% greening of buildings, which is extremely ambitious. Uh, one million trees are going to be planted. I don't know where because it's a very small country. <laughs> but uh, So there's a lot of, lot of ambitious plans here, and that's why it made total sense. Also, because of its geography, um, it really is is essential for Singapore to work on food tech because there's very, uh, very little arable land here, uh, water security. Uh, so Singapore is really pushing on with all that to make sure that they have a secure and safe and sustainable future. Tell us, how did Green Tech Festival come to be? Uh, where did this, where, where was the brainchild and, and why is it here? So I own part of Formula E. Uh, it's the electric Formula One racing series. Uh, again, global, there's a world championship. And um, around the race, there was nothing happening. So I was like, hey, why don't we create some cool festival around with an award night, with a conference, exhibition, to really showcase the best of the best when it comes to green technology and also to honor the world's leading change makers in an award gala. And so we created that in Berlin and it was a great success. And so here we are now globally. And last night was in fact our award gala where we had the honor of welcoming Boyan Slat, uh, for example, who got the special prize from the ocean cleanup. And he is by 2030 going to rid the Pacific Ocean, it's called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is three times the size of Germany, a huge problem. And he has created technology now, which is deployed already in the Pacific, and it's going to re remove the entire plastic there uh, by 2030, which is incredible. Now, in terms of the plastic that you're talking about, uh, the, the fact that we're still in a pandemic, even though we are living with it in many parts of the world, there's a lot of medical waste. Uh, has anything been done or are you looking into what's going to be done about the medical waste that is being created by COVID? Um, yeah, absolutely. So actually I was on a canoe here on the river yesterday uh, with the whole team. We spent two hours cleaning up the river because it's important we really show that we're also engaged ourselves, you know, and it's, it's very nice to do that. And it was incredible, the amount of medical waste as well um, in the rivers. So it was quite shocking. We managed to take 30 kilos out in the two hours. So I think we made our small contribution. Um, it's a difficult one. Um, I mean, again, going back to Boyan Slat, what he, he has a second technology as well, where he was just at, uh, at, um, uh, at the G20 summit and had an agreement with, uh, with Indonesia now to deploy over uh, close to 100 interceptors in rivers. Uh, so it's positioned in the river and captures all the plastic and medical uh, waste that is going downstream. Um, and that's going to have a, a ginormous impact as well because we know that most of the, um, most of the um, what do you call it, uh, rubbish that ends up in seas and plastics comes from 90% of the rivers uh, um, globally. You know? and, and it's very few big rivers that cause all the damage.